Here is a dual overhead cam 4.6. This engine was removed out of an aviator. The heads were removed, rebuilt, and installed some comp cams, 278s with comp springs. You can see uh, the girdle has been cut to clear the cams. This does not have the cam followers uh, or the lash adjusters installed in them. This is this is how I degree the cam. So this is the condition of the engine that I have it in uh, when I degree the cams. Some of the tools that I use, crank turning tool, this also holds the wheel. This is made by Comp Cams. The Trick Flow Cam Degree Kit. Part number TFS 900-0-16. I'll also put the link for that in there. This is a good kit. Uh, it's not a huge wheel, but it gets gets it good enough for me. Uh, here's the it comes with instructions. So if you get this kit, you need any instructions. So it's got the wheel. I had to add on a couple of things to this kit. Uh, you need one of these. It's just a plate. Uh, to mag to, so the magnet will attach to it, and I'm not, I believe it comes with this solid lifter as well. Now here's the piston stop that comes in the kit. It had to, you did have a bevel on here. You can see that I had to grind it down. Uh, so if you have the four thread heads, you may have to do that. I think that's why I had to grind this down. But this is a modified piston stop. We're just going to install the crank gear. If the keyway is in this general area right here, that means cylinder number one or piston number one is at top dead center. And when you put it in, there's a dot. And that dot will be pretty much straight down if it's on the crank correctly. So we'll put that on. We're going to be starting on this cylinder bank over here. So uh, I already have the tensioner installed. I have a, a paper clip in here holding it closed. Uh, if you don't have the pins, a paper clip works really well. I, I bend it over so you have two ends going in there. But you want your your cam keyways pointed down this direction. Here you can see there's two dots on the the sprockets, and I put better dots on these uh, links right here. These chain links were a little uh, darker, but uh, so that's how they'll go back on. The intake cam gets a spacer. This also has a, a cutout for the uh, keyway. Uh, it doesn't matter where that's at. You can line it up with the keyway if you want, but ARP bolt the factory bolts on these are not reusable. Uh, well, you, you can reuse them. I've heard of some people reuse them, but uh, uh, they're torque to yield and really shouldn't be reused. So I got these ARP cam bolts. ARP comes in two different ones. So they have M10 and M12. Any of your aftermarket camshafts are going to be M12, size M12. And before you put your exhaust cam gear on there, you can pull your pin out of your tensioner. Exhaust cam gear. And now you can put your chain on. There's we got two darker dots, two darker links on here. We're going to put those on the dots on both the uh, the lower sprocket and the upper sprocket. Do it on. I use one of these clamps to hold the tensioner in place, just so I don't have to pull the the tensioner back on and off. Now we're going to add our wheel to our crank turning tool. Now 
and you need some point of reference so I got this pointer right here I like to use this one of these uh, holes up here for the water pump you know I have this in this manner because uh, before I tighten it down I try to get it in line with the indicator lines on the wheel and I have it only going down this far so that you can still pull the wheel on and off of the crankshaft. So once I get it aligned with the lines on the wheel, tighten it down. So now we know that uh, we know that we're at top dead center because we left the crank there. Now we're gonna get the wheel somewhere close to top dead center on our pointer here. There, I got it right on. Right on top dead center. Uh, so we'll see how close that is. Before we put our piston stop in, we're gonna turn the crank and pull the piston down. I like to go about 20 degrees. Now I install a piston stop with 5 8 spark plug socket. Make sure I wind them all the way out and put it in there. I just do hand tight. Now with a really long screwdriver you go down and turn the actual stop in. So once it, once it stops and you're being really gentle now, that should be touching the top of the piston. So I'll back it off about a three quarters of a turn. Okay, so back on our wheel here, we're still sitting at about on 20 degrees and I want to run the piston up to hit the, uh, the piston stop. And by hit, I mean gently touch it. So we know that it shouldn't go past top dead center so I'm going to I'm going to turn uh, my pry bar this way and rotate the crankshaft so we see how close we get to the TDC and it didn't hit so I'm going to go back we need to bring the piston stop down some I'll put a couple turns on the piston stop Okay, so right there it's touching. Right there it's touching the piston stop. We'll see what degree we got on here. Okay, so my wheel's showing 24 degrees on this side of top dead center. And now we're gonna rotate it around. We know that it won't go, we know that it won't go that way, so I'm gonna rotate it around to get to the other side of TDC and see how many degrees are on the other side. And you wanna slow down when you start getting close to the top dead center again. You don't wanna slam into the top of the piston stop. So it's at two degrees. Now the idea here is we have to get the same amount of degrees on either side of top dead center on this wheel. So we had 24 on one side and two on this side. Okay, so if we have two degrees on here, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and 24 on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on 11 over here. And now we rotate it back around and see what kind of degrees we've got. So we've got in between, uh, right at 11, 11 degrees on this side. Right on, that's 11 degrees. So now we have 11 degrees on either side. So now we know that right in between there is TDC, so our zero 
degrees is TDC. This is the most important step before you start any of this stuff. You have to make sure that your wheel is accurate to what is actually happening inside of your cylinder. If you don't get this right, then your, your cam degree isn't gonna be correct. If at any time you wanna go back and recheck this, uh, because this wheel will come on and off, if you drop the wheel or if you think that the wheel might have spun from the actual tool, then you can go back and restart this step. Remove the piston stop. I have to use a magnet to get mine out. Our engine is at top dead center. You can see that it's lined up with the marker. We're gonna move up top now, and we need to get set up up here. So we need to set up our dial indicator. Uh, but first, we're gonna put, and we're gonna be testing number uh, six, and we need to put our solid lifter down in there, but you can see the lobe of the cam is in the way. So we're gonna rotate it backwards so that we can uh, get that lifter in there. And here's the solid lifter. It's just got uh, it's got a little set screw down inside there. So as you, it comes with an Allen wrench to go down inside. So as you turn the Allen wrench, it actually pulls up on it. So you make sure that's all the way bottomed out. And now we need to rotate the cam lobe back around so that we can get our lifter inside there, or our cam follower. Okay, now you're gonna take your cam follower and place that on there. The side with the with the hole in it is gonna go over the lash adjuster. Once it's on, you need to tighten that Allen inside there to take the lash out of it. And there you can see that it's all the lashes out of it. Doesn't need to be super tight, just basically removing the lash from it. And now we gotta attach our base because all this is, the head is aluminum, so we need steel uh, to attach our, our magnet to. So you gotta watch out. I don't think it's gonna really come in contact with the cam lobes, um, but uh, you can move this around. You can put it over here. Uh, you can put it on here. I use the, uh, the covers or I use the bolt holes for the valve covers I just got a little M M8 bolt this doesn't need to be too tight you don't want to strip it out just need to get it to hold it in place now put the base on The dial indicator, gotta put this extension on there. Uh, if it has a little tip on it, then it just unscrews from the, the end of it, and then you screw this on. Okay, now this is the tricky part. You need to get the dial indicator flat on the retainer, on the valve retainer. So from this angle, you want it to be right on there and at the same at basically the same angle as what the valve is. It's kind of tricky to get it, but uh, you have to do it every time when you move from one cam to the other. It'll take your time and, and, and you'll get it. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I got uh, the base on uh, that bolt right there. I got it angled around. Make sure that when you clamp right here, you're clamping on the, the part of the dial indicator that doesn't move. Uh, I've accidentally clamped onto here before and then you don't get the reading at all on there. So make sure that it's it's clamped on the part of the dial indicator that doesn't move right here. This part is actually gonna move up and down as this goes up and down. Get a reading and it's right on the valve spring retainer. That should be good. And you want to make sure that you have some preload on here so you can see that I've actually got some preload on 
the dial indicator it's it's sticking up some because as we rotate this is going to go down and we have to make sure we can get a measurement right, i'm going to rotate this back around to top to the center and now the cam lobe is actually pushing down on the follower okay so i'm going to see if i can find at the the peak of this so where this where this uh, where the indicator stops is where we need to go back and forth a few times and get that get that zeroed out Okay Okay, that's pretty good. So now as I go from 50 or a hundred thousandths before it, let's see, it goes up, there's the peak, it's zero, and then we're gonna go back around. Okay, so when we get our readings, we want to do it in a clockwise manner. So uh, the uh, cam lobe is on the, on the front side. It's uh, about to start, or it's pushing down on the the follower and the lifter and all that and we got our our indicator locked in at zero when it hits the it, when it hits the peak of its opening and we're going to take some readings so you don't measure it right at zero you measure it at fifty thousandths before zero and then fifty thousandths after zero and you take the two uh, degrees that you get add them together divide by two and that gives you your cam degree so let's see if we can go ahead and get a a reading from this. I'm going to sneak it up on zero so I know and then back it down about a hundred. Okay so there I just hit zero and I'm going to go backwards until it gets to the zero again and now I'm, I'm going to go up and I'm going to stop at 50. And the reading is 158. Okay, now we got our first reading. We're going to keep going. We're going to go around past zero. Zero is going to be down here. And then it's going to go back and we're going to stop at 50 again and get a reading. There's zero. Fifty. Yeah, it looks like seventy-five. So one fifty-eight plus seventy-five equals two thirty-three divided by two. Our degree is one sixteen point five. The cam card on this, uh, these comp two seventy-eights calls for uh, one sixteen on the exhaust. Uh, so I'm good there. So we'll now we'll move to the intake and see what that's at. Now we've got to move everything over to the intake cam. Now we'll zero out our gauge. Now we'll see what we got on the intake cam. Seventy-four. And now second reading. One fifty-one. Now seventy-four plus one fifty-one equals two twenty-five divided by two. 112 and a half, that's within a half a degree on a 112 center line for the intake. So we're good. This side is good. Now torque to 90.
Now you can put the tensioner on, the stock tensioner. So this is a, a metal tensioner. Uh, that's all I use. You can use a metal tensioner on uh, on three and four and two valves. So if you have plastic ones, try to get these metal ones. They're much better. These are torqued to uh, 18 foot pounds. I just go 20. And all these other bolts that hold the guides, these smaller M8 bolts, they're torqued to 90 inch pounds, 89 inch pounds, but I go to 90 inch pounds anyway. Pull the pin. Now you can take the wheel off. When I do take the wheel off, I like to put it at top dead center right on zero so that when it goes back on, I know it's right back on zero. Now you can also double check the uh, to make sure your wheel is, if you think that you might have bumped the indicator, if you bumped the, if that came loose or something, or if it got kicked or whatever, you can check your top dead center again. Before we start putting anything on over on this side, you want to make sure that all your dots are still lined up over on this side. One of the mistakes people make when people do this is they go back and forth or they'll be working on the driver's side or i'm sorry the passenger they'll be working on this side and then when they take it apart to grind the grind the cams they forget to make sure that this side is where it needs to be or it's 180 out on this side you want your keyways facing down on this side the secondary sprockets are going to be flipped around so the actual spacer the space of it is going to be facing out you'll be able to see the dots and pull your pin and air P bolt again we've got the lube on the threads and on the bottom of the head but not on the bottom of the washer exhaust cam sprocket now we got our chain Verify the dark links on each end. Now the wheel goes back on. Now we're still top dead center. And now we start setting up uh, number one exhaust cam. So we gotta get the lobe out the way. Install a solid lifter. Follower. And now we'll zero our gauge out. Before I snug up the exhaust cam, I'm going to get it off the cam lobe. Okay, so before I snug this down, the exhaust cam, I'm going to put it in the forward position. So I'm going to put some forward pressure on it. This has a little bit of play back and forth. I'll put forward pressure on it. And now we'll go ahead and get our first reading. Got 155. Now we'll get our second reading. Seventy-three, so one fifty-five plus seventy-three equals two twenty-eight divided by two. We have one fourteen, so we need to uh, we need to advance it, and we need another two degrees out of it. 
Okay, so we're backing off the lobe. Okay, before we take our cam gear off, we want to find out what side we need to grind on uh, for the keyway. So we need to advance the cam. Uh, so we're going to need to grind this side of the keyway. So I'm going to put a mark on that side. All right, we've got our cam gear back in the vise. We got a black mark around the edge of it. Do some grinding. Okay, so here you can see we got a little bit more play. Seems like it might be enough, but there's still a little bit of an air gap on that side. So I think I got a, I got a high spot on there. It should sit flat, but we'll see. We'll see what we get out of that, and if uh, we need to take it back off, we can. Okay, so again, we're gonna push our cam forward. And now we'll get a couple readings. Uh, first reading is one fifty seven and a half. And our second reading is 75 and a half. So 157 and a half plus 75.5 equals 233 divided by 2, 116 and a half. So that's within a half a degree of where we want it to be. So that, that's good. Now we're going to switch from the exhaust over to the intake. Now we'll zero out the gauge. Okay, before I snug this up, I'm gonna go ahead and roll it over on the back side of the camshaft. So the spring is putting pressure on the cam. So instead of me using the wrench, now the spring is pushing it uh, forward or clockwise. And we'll get our first reading. And we got 72. Now our second reading. Yeah, 150. So 72 plus 150 equals 222 divided by 2 equals 111. We want a 112 center line. So I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can't put some wrenches on here and, and get it to go another half a degree.
Okay, I'm not too confident in that, but uh, let's see what let's see what it gets us. Now, first reading. I got looks like seventy two and a half. Now second reading. Second reading is fifty one fifty one and a half. Okay, so seventy two point five plus 150.5 plus 223 divided by 2, 111 and a half. So that gets us within a half a degree. So the wrench trick uh, gave us that half a degree that we needed. Uh, so we're good. Okay, so now I'm going to back it off of the cam lobe. And I'm going to actually put it to where the dots are all facing up as if we were doing the cam time or if we were doing the cam timing just to double check to make sure everything is still good. Now we'll get our tensioner in. 20 foot pounds. Pull the pin. And now torque the cam sprockets. And don't forget your pointer. Okay, so that, that's pretty much it on degreeing the cams on a, on a four valve, 4.6. Uh, it'll be the same with a 5.4 four valve. Uh, the main difference between the two valve and the four valves, you're gonna be doing different uh, two intake, or an intake cam and an exhaust cam. But as long as you take your time with it and uh, you know get, get a repeatable reading, uh, you set your wheel correctly, and understand what you have to do to the cam in relation to uh, what the piston's doing, uh, it's not that bad. It's a little bit of a on and off process sometimes. Uh, you don't file enough or you file too much and then you gotta move it back as you've seen in this video. Um, <clears throat> last thing you wanna do is double check and make sure that all your dots line up with your, with your markings. And so now, now you can start putting it back together. Uh, you put the lash adjusters, cam followers in there, and then your cover is on, your diamond chain cover and valve cover, and that's it.